When Sony released Gran Turismo on the PlayStation 1, a new benchmark was set for realistic driving games on home consoles. Even as a huge N64 fan, I couldn't help but pick up that game and be amazed at the level of depth, the graphics, and the sheer amount of gameplay packed into the disc, and it offered a huge challenge that kept me returning for many months. When any new benchmark is set, it's always interesting to see what games come along to challenge for the crown of the best racing game. With the N64, it's often difficult to pick the best game in any genre. Say platformers for example. You have Mario 64, Banjo, Conker's Bad Fur Day and many more. First person shooters such as Goldeneye, Perfect Dark, Doom 64 and Quake 2 all duped out for that honour. But when it came to racing games, things became much harder. See, there wasn't a truly classic straight racer on the system. If you take away kart racers and sports racing games, you're often left with a swathe of arcade racers such as Beetle Adventure Racing to get your driving fix. Now don't get me wrong, there's some awesome arcade racers on the system, but for those that tried to go for something a little bit more realistic, things often fell short. It wasn't until the third racing game effort from the Midway and Boss Game Studios collaboration that the N64 got what I feel is not only the best racing game on the console, it's also one of the few games that when you look at you could even be fooled into thinking it was an early PlayStation 2 title. Landing on store shelves in 1999 in both North America and Europe, World Driver Championship was indeed one of the last simulation style racing games on the console, and because of that, it was able to take advantage of the studio's experience, not only of developing for the N64, but also the technical knowledge of pushing the hardware to its limits. The development team spent a large amount of time during the game's development trying to squeeze as much out of the hardware, which was aging by this time. They used the various processes to allow a greater draw distance, highly detailed textures, and models and advanced weather and lighting effects to make the visuals really stand out. The Audio 2 used the Doppler Effect MP3 system to ensure the audio held up as much to the visuals. They were also keen to make this high resolution and have a smooth frame rate experience even without the expansion pack which they ended up achieving. This has to be one of the few times on the console where a studio has promised and delivered everything in that regard. So technically the game is superb, but what about the feature list? Now I must admit that when I saw this on paper I couldn't see how everything could have ever been packed into the cart because the game contains 15 different racing teams, 4 driving modes, 10 tracks all with multiple variations of the routes in addition to mirror and reverse modes. There would also be 20 different racing events ranging from straight races to endurance races you'll no doubt remember from the Gran Turismo series. The developer also promised that entire races could be viewed in replays and even saved in their entirety to memory packs. With so much on offer, the important thing is how the game plays, and this is where things become more interesting. If you've played many N64 racing games such as myself, you will have become almost conditioned into a very set way of completing racing games. You choose your car, cup, win a series of races, and then you'll progress to the next difficulty. The same formula does apply here, but it's been enhanced further. You will need to pick a team to race for, and this will vary your range of cars that you can actually drive with. You can swap teams as you will, but you'll need to start gaining points to work your way up the World Driving Championship leaderboard. You start at a lowly 30th place, and you'll earn points for racing, and like an RPG, you have to grind out points from racing to move up levels. Leveling up allows you to race for bigger teams, who have the better cars, and this makes the game have a lot of backtracking. See, when you first start the career mode, the cars you have are terrible. Many reviewers of the time noted this was a frustrating experience which I can completely agree with. This is because the first few cups that you'll get to race in, you'll find it near impossible to finish high up in the positions, simply due to your car being underpowered when compared to your rivals. In turn, you'll need to keep doing these same beginner tournaments again and again to gain enough experience to level up, then join a better team and get a better car which will actually give you a chance of finishing in the first few places or winning the tournament overall. This process continues throughout the entire single player experience, and I must admit the continual grind in this regard will put off some players fairly early. Without a doubt, this has to be one of the steepest learning curves of any N64 racer, 
and so brace yourself for a tough but ultimately rewarding experience. With 30 licensed cars and 15 teams in the game, you can imagine just how long it will take you to reach the number one ranking in the world. In a way, this is also one of the game's charms. In the same way that you didn't complete Gran Turismo in a single sitting, World Driver Championship is one of the few racing games on the N64, which I can honestly say it will keep you playing it for weeks, if not months at a time. Fans were craving for a deeper driving experience on the Nintendo 64, and with World Driver Championship, they finally got it. It would be near impossible to beat the car physics of Gran Turismo, and World Driver Championship doesn't compare. However, that's not to say the game is sloppy in this area. With the studio's other titles including Top Gear Rally, I was worried that the floaty controls of that title would be apparent here, and for the best part the answer is no. Each car does feel genuinely different to handle and control, and they each have their own statistics and it's honestly very cool when you unlock a new car, because it helps freshen up the experience. To give an example, if you choose a heavier model car you may find that cornering is harder, however other racers smashing into you will have less of an impact. Choose a lighter model car and it will feel more responsive, but if one of the many aggressive opponents slams into you, then you'll likely be thrown all over the track. It's a trade-off, and you'll eventually find what style of car works best for your racing experience. The game's courses themselves, as the name suggests, do take place all over the world, from the tropical roads of Hawaii to the dimly lit streets of nighttime Tokyo. The wide range of courses and the sheer amount of routes in them makes the races feel fresh most times you play them. When you combine this with some pretty smart AI from your opponents and a decent amount of ruthless aggression from them, you're not only being tested by the car's power and handling, but also by the clever opponents. As previously mentioned, the game is quite simply stunning, with two screen options to play with. Firstly, there's the full screen mode, and there's also the letterbox high res mode, which doesn't require the expansion pack. Both look great, however, the high res letterbox mode is something to behold. My only wish is that they had tried a full screen high res mode for those of us who did indeed have the expansion pack, but that is a minor gripe. In both resolutions, the frame rate is solid enough, but it does slow down slightly when there's multiple other drivers on screen. The exterior car view has the lowest frame rate as expected and the internal cockpit view with no rear mirror is the fastest frame rate. The car models themselves have high polygon models, which some reviewers noted are higher count than some of Gran Turismo's. When in race they all feature reflections, light sourcing and the same four point suspension system sat found in Top Gear Rally. Prior to races you'll also get a flyby of the course and your car and you can see how just insanely great this looks. Sadly though, when it comes to the audio department, the sound is nowhere near on par with the visuals, despite a valiant attempt by Zach Oren, who returned to the helm with another rock inspired music in this game, which is an improvement over his previous efforts, but it still comes across as generic and lacking much depth. The quality is nice though, and although it's clearly not CD quality, it doesn't suffer from the huge compression which plagues many other N64 racers. The effects too in a similar vein are there, but they really don't do much to add to the experience because whilst most of them do sound beefy and full of life, there are others which sound like high powered lawnmowers have been put into the car. So it could be best to turn down the effects in the options menu when you're playing the game. Another area I felt the game is lacking is in the car workshop. One of my favourite aspects in many races is being able to upgrade elements of the car to boost its performance or to design it myself with some cool decals and so on. This area would have really helped to have cemented a simulation like element in this game and it is dearly missed area that would have really helped to well, make petrol heads fall in love with this game because they love nothing more than spending hours tinkering with their setup like I do. In summary though, World Driver Championship on Reflection is still an interesting title. Sure it didn't do anything groundbreaking in terms of the gameplay, and rightly or wrongly many compare it to Gran Turismo which in reality is the superior game. However when it comes to wanting a serious experience on the N64, there's just enough here to keep it on the simulation side rather than venturing off into an arcade feel, and there's a whole ton of content to get stuck into. It's not a game that you'll pick up and breeze through quickly, 
though I fear that many people will have lost interest by the time the game becomes really enjoyable, which is later in the game when the better cars and courses are unlocked. Still, although there's not much competition in this style of game on the Nintendo 64, it's good to see that World Driver Championship takes the crown on its own merits and not by default. If you're playing with a friend or driving solo, there's a whole lot to love about this game. Not only that, but from a collector's perspective, the game sold fairly well, which makes picking up a copy fairly easy and straightforward, and it's a lot cheaper when compared to some of the more obscure titles around. And so for today's topic of conversation, I'd love to know if you agree that this is the best out-and-out -out racing game on the console. If you have a great idea which you think would have improved the game overall, then please also let me know. I also think having some driver customization or storyline in the career mode would have been a nice addition, so what do you think? Whatever your views and whatever your thoughts are, sound off in the comments section down below, and until next time.